Happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Elon's Matchup Maximizer, a podcast presented by Keeping Carlson, where I, Elon Dubrovsky, take a look at next week's NHL schedule and try to help out everyone in those head-to-head leagues where you're going to try to find someone to stream in, and you're going to want to stream people in from teams that play on enough off-day games that you're going to get an advantage over your opponent, preferably players that are actually going to do something. That's the challenge we look at here. Again, for people new to the Matchup Maximizer, I'd be curious. If you're new to the Matchup Maximizer, Maximizer, I'd love to know how, how you got into this so late. Uh, but yeah, tweet at Kevin Carlson. But anyways, if you're new to this, the idea is that if there's a busy day in the schedule, if you add someone out of free agency, it's not going to help you because your roster is probably already going to be full on that day. So you want to find people that you could stream in on those other days and actually get some games out of no point getting someone on your bench. Next week, the week of November 20th to the 26th is a doozy. Okay, this is not an easy streaming week. Because there are two days, first of all, where there's no hockey happening, no Tuesday, no Thursday, I guess uh, Thanksgiving, Wednesday, though, there's like almost all the teams are playing and also Friday, almost all the teams are playing. So Wednesday and Friday, basically forget about it. We're just looking at people you could stream in for either Monday Saturday or Sunday. Those are going to be your three days. No one is playing on all three of those days. So basically, the best you'll be able to get is someone that has two light day games, the Monday and then either the Saturday or the Sunday. There's nobody that plays Saturday and Sunday. So a very strange week. You're going to want to hit early. So basically, uh, I've got a list of 10 teams that play two light day games. And I guess we'll just go through all of them and try to come up with what you can do. Obviously, on the flip side, if you're looking at teams like the Ottawa Senators, who only play once and it's on the busy Friday, or the Washington Capitals, who play twice, but it's on those Wednesday, Friday, you're not going to get any luck streaming those people in. And you might want to take a look and see if you have someone on your team from one of those teams that maybe it's time to consider dropping going into this week, especially if it's a crucial week. You know, like Matthew Joseph has been doing good on Ottawa, but obviously you got to leave him on the waiver wire because there's no point adding him to not get any games next week. But okay, we do have a lot. So I guess just to split things up, Let's say that we want a Monday game and a Saturday game is ideal because then you could drop the Saturday person for someone else playing on Sunday. So that's how I'll prioritize the Monday Saturdays and then we'll look at the the Monday Sundays after. So let's start uh, with, I guess, the team that I'll say that has the best streaming schedule of the week, the Vancouver Canucks, specifically because they play Monday against San Jose, then Wednesday, Friday, doesn't matter. You're not gonna be able to fit the person in anyways. And then Saturday again versus San Jose. So the Sharks have been a bit better lately but still it's a it's a pretty good opponent to have unfortunately vancouver is not the easiest team to stream from like especially if i'm looking at a couple percent rostered using the tool that kevin a bear built like everyone is taken from like well except for one guy basically but like Ilya mikhaev is the obvious guy to look at in terms of yahoo mikhaev's only rostered in 14 percent of yahoo leagues but currently as of saturday that i'm recording the saturday november 18th mikhaev is rostered in 94 percent of kakupful leagues so obviously a big difference there people in kakupful clearly know a couple by the way is the keeping carlson ultimate Patriot fantasy league people know that mikhaev has been playing on the top line with Pedersen and kuzmenko and has been doing pretty well there every once in a while he does you know doesn't do anything that's why he's a streamer but uh when he does hit he usually scores a goal and so it's, it's going pretty well so uh, mikhaev is an obvious stream i think for next week if you can get him get those two games versus san jose on those light days aside from that you look at the top six for vancouver and it's you know all the spots are spoken for pretty much except for one guy uh so yeah so Pedersen, mikhaev and kuzmenko like i said garland was there for a game because kuzmenko was injured but i think kuzmenko is gonna be back today i'm recording this right before the canucks game starts on saturday november 18th uh then yeah the second line brock besser jt miller and phil de giuseppe who you should have available to you. And that's a very good spot. He doesn't get power play. You're not going to get much from him. He only has one point in his last four games, but it was a goal. He takes some shots, Phil Giuseppe. Not too many. Like, he's had a game with two. It's a lot of, like, ups and downs. Like, you know, you got two, then zero, then three, then two, then zero, then two. I'm just looking at the game log of shots on goal. Um, but, yeah, seven points in 17 games overall. So, obviously, it's not going to be a, a huge hit here. But if you're in a deep league and you're looking for someone to stream from the Canucks, I think he's the guy you go for and hope that if the Canucks could drop, like, eight on the Sharks, then maybe he could get on one or two of them and end up having a pretty good week as a streamer. It's not going to be my streamer of the week. But as far as the team with the best schedule, obviously, so yeah, so go with Mikhaev if you could get him and otherwise Phil Giuseppe over on the Canucks. Okay, so that's one of 10 teams with the two off day games. 
Uh, next up, let's pick another team. Let's go to the Sharks, actually. So uh, I guess it's the exact flip side. They've got the Monday and Saturday versus Vancouver. With the Sharks, you could get anyone you want, pretty much. Maybe not Tomas Hurdle, though he is only rostered in 34% of Yahoo leagues. Uh, if you look at Kakupful, he is rostered in all of the Kakupful leagues. So obviously a big difference there. Uh, so yeah, if you're not in the Keeping Carlson Alta Patriot Fantasy League, or if you are, but you're in another league as well, of course, uh, yeah, go grab Hurdle. He's the obvious shark to grab, and it's a decent schedule. If you think you could get, uh, you know, a couple behind Thatcher Demko, and, you know, it's not as if Demko's been unbeatable, uh, though Vancouver has been really good. So yeah, obviously grab Hurdle. Clearly he's your top streamer no one's even close it's almost like do you even recommend anyone else i'll throw a name out there okay i could tell you like all okay in the last game the win over st louis they were rolling hurdle zetterland and eckland so it's almost like i feel like i could stop there and just say you want someone playing with hurdle right the top power play was grandland hurdle duclair zetterland kaylin addison uh the name i'm gonna pick for san jose if it's not hurdle is fabian zetterland yeah he's uh he's doing okay and by okay, I mean by shark standards. Uh, seven points in 17 games overall. Uh, he had a one goal, one assist game against the Oilers like a couple weeks ago. Like, honestly, like, this is more of a hunch thing. Like, there's really no one on San Jose who is doing that well. And Zetterlin kind of jumps out to me as someone to maybe try and and hope for the best. Honestly, like, I, who, or you could pick someone just based on their spot in the lineup. You could grab Duclair. He had a couple multi-point games in a row uh, a couple weeks ago before he missed some time with injury. Um, but yeah, I, I, just a hunch. If you're going to grab a shark and it's not Hurdle, I, I think Zetterland is going to get the second most points. So, you know, we'll, we'll wait and see there. Okay, the next team that I'll bring up that plays on both Monday and Saturday, let's go to the New York Rangers. Coming off a big win today over the Devils, 5-3 to three after a really long break. Uh, most of the points went to the obvious guys. You had Panarin with a couple goals. Vincent Trocek, three assists. He's really done well. We talked about him on last week's show, uh, beating expectations ever since Heedle went down. Uh, you did get a couple goals from Jimmy VC. So maybe you could like hope that VC keeps that up. I don't think it'll happen from his, I guess it's the fourth line with Tyler Pitlick and Barkley Goudreau. Uh, so yeah, as far as uh, the, oh, so the other lines, but so Panarin, Chocek, Lafreniere. Uh, Lafreniere, I guess I'll mention, only 40% rostered on Yahoo. He's taken in most of the cupful, but I guess uh, I would go for Lafreniere. He didn't get a point today, but he did take three shots and he was on a nice little run before that. So I don't think he counts as a streamer. I think he's probably too high, but if you're in a shallow league, then maybe you grab him. Eric Gustafsson shouldn't count, uh, but he is only rostered in 31% of Yahoo leagues. He's gotten a point like in every single game over the past couple of weeks, including an assist today. If he's still somehow out there and now with a week with a good schedule, like 100% grab him. Don't think twice. Like you should have grabbed him a while ago. Okay, but after that, uh, the next line, Zabanajad's been playing with Kreider and Blake Wheeler. And there's a whole conversation to be had about what's going on with Mika Zabanajad. And Brian and I will have that conversation on tomorrow's show. But in the meantime, I, do we recommend Blake Wheeler? I mean... He's got points in three straight games. Sure, today's goal was an empty net goal, but hey, those count and maybe the Rangers will be up again and they'll put Wheeler out there and maybe he'll get another chance. So yeah, I guess Wheeler is going to have to be, he's like my Phil Giuseppe. Like I don't have too, too much faith, but he's on a decent line. Uh, so you would think maybe he'll be able to do something. Uh, I guess you could also go for a Keandre Miller, but yeah, he's been pretty slow and I would definitely take Gustafsson over Keandre Miller. No question about it. If you had the choice there. So yeah, I guess uh, we're going Wheeler on the Rangers. I don't know if I've had any like huge names here yet. So we'll see as we go through if we hit someone that's maybe a little bit more exciting to stream. I mean, Mikhaev is there uh, on Yahoo. Like if you're not, uh, not in cupful leagues, like I said. Okay, next up, how about the LA Kings? They only play three times, but like I said, it doesn't matter because the Wednesday, Friday are so stacked anyways. And yeah, the main thing is they play Monday against Arizona, then Friday against Anaheim, and then Saturday against Montreal. So you'll be able to get a Monday and a Saturday game from your LA Kings streamer. And that's a team that in a lot of leagues, there's some interesting players there. At the time of this recording, the Kings haven't started their Saturday night game against St. Louis. But if you look at the lines from the previous game versus Florida, so they were rolling Kopitar, Kempe, Byfield like they have forever. Uh, there has been a change since we talked about Arthur Kaliev a couple episodes ago. He was playing with Deneau and Trevor Moore. Uh, Kevin Fiala has taken Kaliev's spot on that line. And Kaliev has been playing with Pierre-Luc Dubois and Jared Anderson Dolan. So yeah, Kaliev has lost a lot of luster. Pierre-Luc Dubois, he's the other guy we'll talk about on the Sunday show. He's definitely not looking great. You know what? I, can I just like recommend Dubois 
as someone that might have been dropped in your league recently because of how bad he's been. So I kind of like the idea if you're like going to stream someone in, like I guess there's like two ways to look at it, right? So this is just more of a, a general thoughts on streaming. You could go for someone who's on a hot streak and just hope they'll keep it up. But it's also kind of fun. Go for someone who's been so bad, like someone who was drafted and was expected to be good, and then has been so bad that they've been dropped just in time for a good streaming week. Why not give that player a shot? You know, you grab Dubois. Maybe he continues to do nothing. Like, there's no reason to expect things to turn around if he sticks on this, like, third, fourth line, whatever. But, uh, you know, like, maybe he finally turns it around. He's making a lot of money. He's going to keep getting opportunities, you would imagine. So, yeah, I would say if you can get Dubois, then go for him just because what if he clicks? And then it turns into a a hold like he should have been. Uh, But assuming that he's not available anyways, I guess you're looking at, like, a Byfield who's playing with Kopitar and Kempe, like I said. Or you go for, like, a Trevor Moore who isn't as hot as he was to start. Like, he was on fire, but he's still overall looking really good, right? 13 points in 15 games, had an assist versus Florida. Uh, So Trevor Moore is definitely someone I would take a look at. He's only rostered in 83% of a couple divisions. I feel like for this show, it's like my thresholds should be, like, maybe 30% for Yahoo or 35%, and then, like, 80% 80% for a couple. So maybe Trevor Moore just barely doesn't make the cut. He is at 32% rostered, but I think he's definitely a good guy to stream. And then if you can't get him, I guess uh, you can go for a Phil Deneau, who plays now, like I said, with Fiala and Trevor Moore. Uh, so that's a good spot for Deneau. And he got an assist in the last game, took a couple shots. So I think as of now, I think uh, Phil Deneau is going to be my top streamer. I think of people who I think might be available to you. Only 17% rostered on Yahoo, only 23% rostered in the Cupful. So this is an official, like you probably can go get him. And I think he's worth getting, uh, you know, for a couple games. You get the Monday, you get the Saturday, then you drop him for someone playing on Sunday. Not too shabby. So Phil Deneau is uh, in, in the leaderboard right now. I think as my streamer of the week. By the way, last uh, week streamer of the week, I I picked Ellie Tolvanen, and I think that's gone pretty well. I'm I'm happy with that pick. Tolvanen didn't get a point in the Monday game. It was like a nice Monday, Wednesday, Thursday schedule, but uh, Tolvanen made up for it. He picked up an assist versus Edmonton on the Wednesday, along with seven shots and another assist versus the Islanders with three shots. We'll see how he does today against Vancouver. That game is just getting started as I record this. Uh, Tovenin, I think he's looking like a decent hold, to be honest. So, I don't know. I think I, I, think I did okay with that pick. Uh, I don't know if, if Deneau is going to end up being my pick, but we'll keep going through these teams. we still got a few to go through, but we'll take a quick break here. We'll be back in just a sec. You're listening to the Matchup Maximizer. Hope you're liking it. All right, we are back, and I'm going through the 10 teams that have two light day games next week, Monday and then either Saturday or Sunday, starting with the teams that go Monday, Saturday, just because then, like I said, you can drop your Saturday stream for someone playing on the Sunday. Next up, we're going to go to the Colorado Avalanche. They're currently tied 3-3 as I record this with Dallas uh, late into the third. So we'll see if they'll be able to uh, pull this one out. Uh, But in the meantime, next week, yeah, they go Monday against Nashville. And UC Saros hasn't been as scary as he has in the past. Actually, Lankinen had a good game today. Fort Worth and then Saturday versus Calgary. So two games where potentially the Avs can score some goals if they have their top guys going. Uh, Obviously, you're not going to be able to get Nichushkin anymore. He was you know, really slumping to start the year. And he was maybe available in a lot of leagues, but especially since Lekkonen's gone down to Chushkin is playing on the line with McKinnon and Ranton and he's on the top power play. Like he's just, you know, someone you want uh, and someone that's no longer available, I'm sure. So I don't even have to like dive into whether you should grab him because that'd be a waste of everybody's time. Um, after that though, there could be a streamer that's interesting. It's kind of in the same vein as a Pierre-Luc Dubois. Maybe you take a look at Ryan Johansson here. So he is has fallen a lot, right? He's still on the top power play, but he's fallen to 15% rostered on Yahoo and only 47% rostered in cupful divisions. And hey, Johansson, first of all, got himself a goal today on the power play, and he is on that top power play. So it is surprising how cold he's been, but I wouldn't mind giving him a shot here for this nice schedule. Like I said, you could always drop him after Saturday if he ends up doing nothing. But I think at this point, what do you have to lose? Uh, You know, go grab your top line, Ryan Johansson. I guess it's not as nice now that Nachushkin is with McKinnon and Ranson. That's leaving Johansson to center a line with Tomas Tatar and Jonathan Druen. 
yeah, you could see why Colorado is not like winning games by so much right now. When you have Lekkinen out of the picture, all of a sudden, you and if you load up the top line, that depth disappears in a hurry. Also, taking a look at today's game log, I'm seeing that they must have switched up some power plays because it's McKinnon, Nichushkin, Rantanen, and Makar were on the ice for like four and a half minutes of power play. And then jo- Johansson's down at two minutes with a bunch of other people. So I'm not exactly sure what went on. So maybe make sure to check game day tweets. Uh, you know, Don't stream him in if he's not on the top power play. And if he's just centering like Drouin and Tomas Tatar, then I'm not interested. So you know what? There might just not be anyone. Like I guess another one to consider is like a Bowen Byram who's another person who's just been like very snoozery i don't think he's worth a hold at this point but maybe worth a stream like he does have that offensive upside but i'm not like really that excited about him i would rather go for uh who was it pierre dubois i think has more of a chance to pop than byram at this point for this season okay next up let's go to the calgary flames just took a shootout L to the Islanders today, 5-4. to four. But hey, four goals. It's pretty good. A lot of people got in on some points. I see that Jonathan Huberdo, an assist and five shots. Wow. Rare to see a good game like that from Huberdo. Kadri, a couple assists. Uh, Elias Lindholm, one assist. Uh, but these aren't players you're probably able to stream anyways. I think the guy that jumps out that you probably just want to go grab, especially with this good schedule coming out, if you could fit him in, and you definitely probably can on the Monday, Saturday. Uh, by the way, Monday's against Seattle and Saturday against Colorado. Connor Zari, come on. Two assists today. And if you look at the lines, Zari was lining up with Kadri and a guy named Martin Pospisil. You know what? It's going to be my second reco in just a sec. But also, uh, Zari was playing with uh, Kadri, Huberdo, Lindholm, and Noah Hannafin. Noah Hannafin on the top power play. Uh, excuse me. I'm like, I guess you're seeing here that I record Match and Maximizer. I'm kind of checking things out as I go here. I haven't uh, poured through all the games like I do before the Sunday show. Uh, that's a separate interesting thing. So maybe just, okay, so yeah, Connor Zari is definitely an interesting streamer. Also take a look and see if Noah Hannafin is available. If he's now the top power play guy, I'm going to have to look into this. But if Noah Hannafin is on the top power play in Calgary, I would definitely just jump on him now and, you know, get the good schedule. And maybe he turns into a hold, especially if you need D. Uh, So those are the two definitely guys to look at. Hannafin only rostered in 35% of Yahoo League. Zari only 3%. But yeah, if we go to the couple percent rostered, You'll see Hannafin is at 45%, Zari at 32%. So you could still get both of these guys, both in uh, Kakuffle and like, well, more likely other leagues. So yeah, take a look at those guys. And then yeah, if you're in a super deep league, take a look at this Martin Pospisil on the top line. Uh, he has five points in seven games now, scored a goal today with six shots. Honestly, I'm going to have to ask Brian like who this guy is. <laughs> when we get, it looks like he was a, a fourth round pick in 2018. This guy's going off. Check to see if he's available in any of your dynasty leagues. I would definitely be interested. He also hits a lot. He's been having some like six and five hit games, three hits today. So yeah, those are going to be my three Flames picks. And I think Connor Zari, he definitely qualifies, only taken in 3% of Yahoo leagues. Like I said, 32% of Kakupful divisions. So yeah, Connor Zari is my current streamer of the week. Get his Monday versus Seattle. Then he'll sit on your bench probably for Wednesday, Friday against Nashville and Dallas. Then you get him on Saturday. Uh, against Colorado and like we've seen here uh, Colorado letting in some goals today oh they they are up now five to three over Dallas how things have changed let's see if uh, anything new from uh, Ryan Johansson no okay he's falling off my list at this point now that I saw that he wasn't even on the top power play the whole game Uh, so yeah Uh, Connor Zari my number one streamer of the week at this point but Noah Hannafin may be higher if you need D and if it actually does bear out that he is on this top power play. So let me actually write this down right now before I don't forget you know, for tomorrow's show. One second. Oh, by the way, I'm just seeing that Vancouver has got the first goal of the game versus the Kraken today and uh, Phil DiGiuseppe with an assist. I'm telling you, he, he, he's in a good spot. JT Miller scored. Like, why wouldn't DiGiuseppe get a point every now and then playing with uh, Miller and, and Besser, like I said? Okay. Uh, next up, let's go to the Boston Bruins. Uh, they demolished the Habs today, 5-2. to two. The Bruins just, man, like uh, people were worried about them going to this year, but they are doing great. 13-1-2 now. Maybe they'll just repeat their uh, record from last year. Why not, right? But as far as fantasy goes, who can you get from the Bruins? Obviously not Pasta, not Marchand, uh, not McAvoy, probably not Pavel Zaka, so I won't mention him. Uh, After that, like, look, you could go for like a Jake DeBrusque who just continues to do nothing. He had an assist today, though, versus Montreal. Boston gets Tampa on Monday, and as long as Vasilevsky's not in, you know that Tampa could let in some goals. 
and then you've got Florida Wednesday, Detroit Friday, and then you got the Rangers on Saturday. So likely not an easy game to score goals against, but still, uh, yeah, maybe Jake DeBrusque is someone you take a look at if you're hoping for like one of these, you know, like I said before, someone who's been obviously was drafted, dropped because, you know, the deployment just hasn't been there. It just hasn't been the season that people were hoping for from Jake DeBrusque, but take him as a streamer and then who knows, maybe he turns into a hold, though like maybe you're going to want to just take someone like I would love to just say take the person playing with you know pasta and marchand but unfortunately like it's zaka at even strength who's probably not available to you and then you've got jvr who like okay well actually okay jvr is only rostered in 13 percent of yahoo leagues and 43 percent of a couple divisions i guess he's been taken in my division the whole time um so okay why is jvr not rostered in more leagues so scratch what I said before, I guess about Connor Zari. Should I say I don't know, I like both of them actually. JVR, if he's available to you, okay, I'm seeing forty three percent of cupful leagues and only thirteen percent of Yahoo leagues, even though he has twelve points in sixteen games. Another goal today for James Van Riemsdyk. He's on that top power play. It's going very, very well for him. He's playing on a line with Charlie Coyle and Trent Frederick at even strength, which does get a decent amount of ice time. Like honestly, uh that's crazy. He should be taken in more leagues at this point. Brian just said on the last show that he thinks that JVR is for real. So he was a, a very great streamer to get the Monday, Saturday. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you think. JVR versus Zari. I'm, I, I'm debating between the two right now in my head of who is the streamer of the week. Okay, next up, Arizona Coyotes. They play Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. But again, doesn't matter if it's three or four games because all we care about is the Monday and the Saturday. The Monday is against LA, against the uh, unbeatable Camp Talbot. And Saturday is against Vegas, another team that's tough to score against. So definitely you're not going to be rushing to grab an Arizona player because they're not the easiest matchups. But if you want to go for someone like Lawson Kraus, still only rostered in 28% of leagues, he's been just continuing to roll. We talked about him on the podcast. I think the conclusion Brian came to, which made a lot of sense, was like it's not going to last, but he just keeps scoring goals. So I'm definitely not going to uh, you know, avoid Lawson Kraus at this point, especially with a good schedule coming up. Kraus is rostered in 89% of Kakupful divisions, though, so I'm going to assume he's not available to you. So Barrett Hayton is injured, right? That's the news, and we'll obviously cover this on the show tomorrow. In Arizona's game today, which was a Vemelka game, which means they lost, of course, and that was to the Jets, uh, it looks like we have a new person on the line with Schmaltz and Keller, and that's Travis Boyd. So... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm not going to recommend that you add Travis Boyd. I'm sorry. Like he did have an assist today. He's been in good spots before in previous seasons, like playing with Clayton Keller. And yeah, he's just not that interesting. Doesn't take like barely shoots at all. Not the type of player I'm interested in fantasy. Uh, definitely, I would take Kraus over Travis Boyd if both of them are available to you. Take a look at Matias Michelli. I always liked Matias Michelli though. Uh, he had a really good rookie season. Uh, slowed down a bit this year. But if he's out there, Michelli still not on the top power play, even with Hayton out. But he's on a line with Kraus and Nick Bjorkstedt. So I would take Kraus first, then give me Matias Michelli as my second pick over on Arizona. And I believe, let me just check. I think I saw he did score a goal today. Yes, so Michelli's up to 12 points in 17 games on the season. That's a 58-point pace. Nothing to sneeze at. Definitely a guy worth streaming if you could get him. All right, so there still are a couple teams that have the two off-day games, but they are Monday and Sunday. So again, not as ideal, because then you have to hold all throughout the week versus being able to drop for a Sunday person. But I will still mention them quickly. The Nashville Predators, they go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. Some weeks, that's like the best schedule possible. Now with Wednesday, Friday stacked, that's just like a decent-ish week. But yeah, you could get Nashville, and they obviously always have like a bunch of players that you'll be able to add to your roster. Like you may be able to get a uh, Gustav of Nyquist, who you know is playing with philip forsberg and ryan o'reilly it's a pretty good spot he still like seems kind of boring like regardless but still like nyquist he did score a goal today he's actually on a hot streak five points in four games you know maybe i shouldn't be so like down on nyquist like he doesn't shoot much which you know i don't like but look if he's going to be on the top line and on the top power play with o'reilly like uh, it was novak on the top power play for a while but now it looks like nyquist has taken the spot that first was Tyson Barry's, and now is Tommy Novak's. And now if it's Nyquist, you know what? Throw him up there. You know, now it's a... I, I like went into this conversation with myself lower than I am now. Maybe Nyquist is in that conversation now with JVR and Connor Zari. Uh, who to take for next week? Maybe I will recommend Nyquist if he's going to stick. T-L-T-P-P. Can I make that a thing? That'd be fun. 
I'd like to coin a new phrase. It's been a while since I've done something like that. Uh, yeah, so yeah, take a look at Gustav Nyquist. He's not rostered in a ton of leagues, that's for sure. Only 13% of Kakupful divisions, which means it's got to be super low. 2% on Yahoo. That's a pretty good streamer, I think, at this point, just because of his deployment. And like I said, the point streak, five points in his last four games. Yeah, definitely he's going to be the top streamer over on Nashville. And then the other team that plays two off-day games, in, but the second one is Sunday, is the Edmonton Oilers. Good luck trying to predict what the Oilers' lines are going to be come like the Sunday especially. In today's 6-4 loss to Tampa, uh, Connor Brown came back for the Oilers and was on a good line, like with McDavid and Ryan Nugent Hopkins, but got no points, only played 10 minutes. The lines probably changed like midway through the game. Honestly, like, I hate, I don't want to recommend any oiler that's not already rostered in your league. So I don't have to. It's my podcast. So that's going to do it. In the end, I've got a three-way tie in my head of who's the best streamer of the week. It's uh, Zari, JVR, and Nyquist. I'm going to pick JVR as my top streamer. Like I said before, I didn't even think he would count. But since he does, then I'll pick him. And then I'll say Zari and then Nyquist. Uh, But yeah, if you can get any of those three, you're going to get those two solid games, which isn't a lot. But who knows? Maybe it'll make the difference. Hope you enjoyed this show. A little bit of a long one here with so many teams with similar schedules. Uh, Enjoy the uh, Thanksgiving if you celebrate that. And looking forward to talking to you tomorrow when I do the mega show with Brian. See ya!